Welcome to everybody to this uh, weekly webinar. I think we have almost all the participants in, so we can we can start. We will have one hour time to discuss about a very, very important topic, uh, support services and informal carers, uh, family carers, the importance of the partnership between the service provision system and the family carers uh, during, during the COVID-19 pandemic. We will have a very in, uh, interesting um, presentations today and we will of course have a chance to discuss you will participants have a possibility to ask questions and we have all already received uh, some of them uh, just a few words uh, as a background uh, for this uh, the the questions we wish uh, we will discuss this afternoon are uh, how to address the current and critical situation and needs of carers of persons with disabilities and how do support services adjust and manage their support uh, to family carers to enable them to provide care to their relatives with the, with disabilities uh, at this time there is there is a lot of uh, pressure for families, uh, for people with disabilities, there has been a lot of changes and restrictions in, in services in, in many countries, and it has uh, put on the spotlight, uh, so to say, the, the families and the support they, they provide. And, and of course, the importance of the working together, the local authorities, the authorities, local authorities, service providers, and, and the families in this situation is, is really fundamental uh, to, uh, to, to promote and, and still to ensure the, the quality of life of, of people with uh, disabilities. Uh, before we uh, move on, I will ask Thomas Signal from ESPD to explain some technical issues of, of our uh, webinar. Thomas. Thank you, Kirsi. Uh, yes, we have, uh, for the first time, we are trying uh, interpretation uh, now uh, in several languages on this webinar to, to help people listen. So if you want to listen in French, uh, at the bottom of your screen, you will see a list of icons. There is one which I believe would have the uh, American flag and have English written. If you click on that button, several options will appear. Uh, to listen to in French, please click the uh, French flag and the French language. Um, to listen in Croatian, because I know we have lots of Croatians who are listening in, um, please click the Spanish flag. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have this, the, the Croatian uh, flag as an option. So to listen in Croatian, please click the Spanish flag, um, English, French, and Spanish, and hopefully uh, the interpretation works. Um, secondly, if you want to listen, uh, if you want to uh, read the closed captioning, so the subtitles, please click on the button next to the language, uh, next to the English and American flag, uh, and click the CC closed caption, and click on the button show subtitles. Uh, normally, there will be subtitles at the bottom of the screen that will appear, and that will help you to uh, follow. Um, if you wish to uh, ask a question to our speakers, because we hopefully will have some time for that afterwards, please uh, um, write your question in the Q&A question and answer bottom uh, um, icon uh, at the bottom of your screen. Um, if you write the question in there, uh, we will hopefully pick it up uh, in the discussion later. If not, uh, you can also write your question in the chat, but of course that is harder to pick up. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you, Kitsi. Okay, thanks. I hope, I hope it's clear. You can ask uh, in the uh, chat section if you have something you want to clarify. I think I, I forgot, I started so quickly that I forgot to uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Kirsi Konola and I, I come from Finland. Um, I'm working for KVPS, which is a service provider, and, and we are uh, founded by Inclusion Finland, so we have uh, fa uh, family members are, are responsible of our uh, of our decision making process so we have a close link to this to this topic we are talking today and i'm also the vice president of of espd uh, just a, a couple of remarks uh, our um, speakers today will look at very interesting questions uh, questions and, and i'm sure all of you all the participants have have faced uh, some very uh, some situations and critical situations as uh, as at the same time there is a lot of a uh, lot of uh, 
insecurity among among families, uh, among people with disabilities. Uh, they have a lot of, uh, let's say, so social and psychological needs, also different to the normal uh, normal life. And at the same time, there is uh, cuts and, and and lockdowns of services and the whole society, which can be very, very stressful for, for many people and as well as families. And also, of course, it, it creates difficulties for families to, to get support and creates que creates also a lot of questions, for example, where they, they can have support if, if they get sick by themselves and, and so on. So uh, so I think we have a lot, of, lot to discuss uh, this afternoon, and I think we will move directly uh, to the presentations. Uh, first, I, first speaker will be uh, will be Isabel Chandler from Cunapay, France, and I ask you, Isabel, to start your uh, presentation. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Kirsi. Hi, everyone. I'm going to share my the screen. It's the very first time for me, so please do excuse me if I'm doing something wrong. Um, Yes. Can everybody see the presentation? Yeah. So uh, yes, I'm Isabel Sussman, uh, Chandler Sussman. Sorry, uh, I am from uh, France, from Paris. Uh, I'm the head of public affairs of UNAPI, and I will introduce to you uh, what UNAPI is actually. Uh, UNAPI is a militant parental movement that brings together many people, actually uh, 900,000 people in France, uh, among the 60 million, 66 million of people. So 1,100 people, families, friends, people, friends, people with disability, professionals, and all of them are gathered within uh, 500 association all over France, including uh, overseas. We are the, also the main manager of social support services in France. Actually, we are uh, managing 3,000 services in France. Our parental DNA guarantees the quality of the support we provide and our respect of persons, mainly. So, we, we were hit, like everyone here, by the pandemic and uh, the situation is affecting uh, the needs of carers and uh, of persons with disabilities, of course. Um, what is actually the situation of carers and actually it's, it's we, we can share all the things that I will say here in every country. We, we are facing a diversity of families and of situations, families with children, with complex needs, single parents, divorced parents, person with disability without family as well, are supported by our services. And very classical also family in a way with, uh, with uh, the two parents, but some of the main families are also families with um, social situations. There is a diversity of carers in a general sense, uh, parents, siblings, children of persons with disabilities, friends, and any new addition to the family. Um, so what are the carers uh, facing during this, uh, this, situ this, this period? Uh, from one day to other, the daily life uh, between uh, service uh, support with service providers and the routine at home has stops because uh, some people went back went back home and uh, life become complicated for many families uh, for many persons with autism spectrum disorders intellectual disability confinement is an ordeal that can lead to uh, many sources of suffering for everybody in the family. Uh, due to the closure of the day center services, uh, now these people are in the family, as I, as I said. And uh, after four weeks of confinement, of lockdown, carriers are physically tired 
and also concern about how long it would last, of course. Uh, last, last Monday, we, we just learned that it would last uh, one, one, one month more at least for uh, the people, uh, every French people, but for people with complex needs, it could last more and more months, maybe more than one month more. So the carriers are physically and psychologically tired. Uh, the work balance uh, is affected, of course. Many of them can't work even from home. And uh, the situation is, not easy and we are receiving many uh, uh, we have an, 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 a line an info line and the people are really telling us that they are in, in, in very difficult situation right now. So how do the support services adjust the support to uh, the informal carriers? Uh, from one day to the other, like in every country, they had to transform their services and uh, because most of the people went, to families, went back to families. And uh, so they set up phone, phone follow-up, assisted by a referring professional, home interventions to provide advice and support. And uh, in some specific situations, support services outside. And now some uh, associations are also developing respite solution for specific needs. And uh, for example, if the parents are hospitalized or for every situation of burnout uh, from the carriers. Um, for example, also to give you an example of what uh, uh, a number of valuable educational and teaching resources have been shared so far with informal carriers to continue the support of children and also to explain them the, the situations. And uh, for example, one of our association has developed an outline platform and thanks to this platform, carriers can have access to hundreds of uh, support and uh, solution, uh, games, educational games, songs, speech therapy activities for children. So I will show you that here. On the right side, you know, uh, une API uh, Avignon from Avignon has developed a booklet to explain when should one when should be locked down and how to protect ourselves from the coronavirus virus. Um, that's for children, but you've got many other kind of support for every kind of uh, age. Uh, we also develop as a une API. As an umbrella as an organization, we have gathered all the initiative of all of our association on one site so that any carrier interested could have access to it. You see the, the site here, Uni et Solidaire. And um, of course, we, uh, we went on uh, advocating and advocating for carriers because there is strong demand from parents, uh, for example, to, uh, to make sure that the people can go out because in France, there is a very limited time uh, to go out, just one, uh, one hour and uh, not very far away, but uh, the families and the, the, with, uh, for, from people with uh, autism told us that it was impossible to stay at home like that. So we asked the government to change the rules for the people uh, with disabilities, with uh, autism or with uh, other kinds of disabilities. So since the 2nd of April, we have got new rules for, for these people. They can, the, the rules are more relaxed for them. So what do we learn from this crisis? That the support services could be very flexible, flexible because from one day to another, they have adapted themselves to the lockdown conditions provided by the government. Very engaged actually, because only 30% of the professional carriers are not working right now because they have a medical condition, for example. They are very innovative and digital friendly 
uh, given the example of tools that I, I, I just uh, showed to you uh, before in the presentation, they are reliable because no one has been left behind and the association are finding support for everyone. Everyone who is uh, uh, actually calling the association will find a solution. And they are, they are very reactive because when people have been hit by the virus, our association uh, specifically in the east part and the north part of France did react immediately, coordinate with the hospital, even though sometimes they have faced some denials and denials of uh, uh, to be taken in in the hospital. But we fight a lot also to make sure that the hospital are uh, caring about the people with disabilities who have been healed with the coronavirus. So actually to, to finish with my presentation, uh, after four weeks, all the carriers are tired, very tired, but thanks to the service providers, family, some of them have found a new balance. And uh, I have difficulties to read actually my, because, oh, sorry, but you, you can find here what the, the parents are telling are telling us about uh, about what is positive, I would say, but I can't read it because I've got the little screen on the on the on the right side. So please uh, just read them. Uh, but basically, they are sharing, telling us that they are sharing with uh, carriers and uh, professional carriers and informal sharers are, are sharing. Corp have a strong cooperation. They are amazing. Just this morning, I just spoke with a, a, a president of an association, and they are telling me they are so amazing. You know what? How they do adapt? How the people are adapting with disabilities are adapting themselves, and how do the professional are adapting? Is just amazing. Is uh, so it, it's very moving to to hear from everywhere, from every place in front that the people are, are doing an amazing job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel, for also, I think, very positive and, and promising note that there is a lot of uh, chances also and, and, and ways to do things in a good way, even, even in this crisis and, and in this situation. I will leave the questions in the end and let's we will have all the presentations first and then we will have time for questions but you can send questions already to isabel also uh, but now we will uh, move to the next one uh, mrs flavia shehu from down syndrome albania or will will give us the next uh, presentation please flavia good afternoon everyone and thank you for the invitation um I'm going to share my screen and go on. So I'm going to give a very brief presentation of uh, Down Syndrome Albania Foundation, which is a foundation founded in 2013. And we work mainly on three areas. The one is service provision for children with intellectual disabilities. And for the moment, we serve to 54 children from 1 to 12 years old with all intellectual disabilities. Um, we also work a lot on inclusive education area and also on employment. At the moment, we have uh, 23 person staff and only 15 of them are directly linked with the service provision, which means uh, is the service director, team leader and therapist. But also we have a very uh, important uh, team member, which is the clinical psychologists for families and carers. Uh, we are not supported by the government financially, I mean, but we work mainly project-based. We uh, have our support from business donors, from individual um, donations, but also fundraising activities. Um, only 30% actually of our beneficiaries pay for the services because we mainly serve to the families that are with very low incomes. Um, a very short description 
and also on our service operations, how we do operate on typical times. Uh, we are a service center which operates on uh, one by one intervention, which means the children come at our center for one or two hours per day, have the therapy interventions, which means ABA, floor time, develop physical therapy, et cetera. And we uh, work from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. With, with very fixed hours for each child. Each of the children uh, approximately comes to the center from six to 10 hours at the week. And we serve to 54 children for the moment. What we have done in these times, basically since May, when we close our services, we are giving services to uh, one to two, which means one therapist to the child and the carer at the same time. Um, the therapy, which is done now uh, at home and with our support is uh, done mostly as per family conventions, which, which means that when they have the time to, uh, to take care and to do the activities with the child and it doesn't extend six hours uh, per week, which are not basically structured. For the moment, we are giving our services to 35 children because some of the parents and families um, do not have digital skills or technology um, access. Some of them do not have internet connection and very few of them choose not to have the service since the child has very uh, mild uh, intellectual disability. Also in typical times, um, only 30%, as I mentioned before, um, pay for uh, the services. Now we are giving the service for free for everyone, but we, do, we did um, reduction of staff payment for, uh, for April. So um, before we used to have uh, one big donor which was supporting our services, uh, all the salary staff basically. And now we decided to postpone this project when we go back on a uh, typical time. So what we've done and what I want to call more kind of more responsibility for carers. Mm -hmm. um, in the first week of May, when we closed our services, um, we have the individual educational plans for each of the child that uh, uh, is part of our center and what, we do, what we've done in the first two weeks is that we adapted all the IAP objectives to be more concrete for parents and we also um, created activities to meet those objectives. We wrote down, down all the detailed description of activities and the frequency that the carer should, should do at home with the child. Later on, we, we created the plan of our uh, plans delivery and reporting time. So which means that each Monday, each of the service mm -hmm. providers uh, gives to the carer's parents the um, weekly plan of work through different means of communication, including inside also videos, photos and support materials for them. And then we follow up in the same day with verbal explanation because somehow for some of the parents it's uh, it's difficult to understand and of course to uh, to implement those activities the next step is the first trial correction uh, the first trial cor uh, correction is a very important step for us because it's the first time that the carer does the uh, activity with the child and it's supervised through a video uh, video call or um, recorded video. And then this video comes back to the service provider and we do our corrections. So in this time, we reduce um, the possibility that the carer, which is not basically a professional, but we are trying to make him a professional, uh, do not uh, make mistakes with the child and doesn't go on in the same way. So this is why it's important the first trial correction and our feedback on this. Uh, on this time. After that, we give further instructions on how to improve um, the activity. And when we see that the carer is not grasping properly the, the activity, we take it out for, um, for a bit of time and we replace it with an easier one. So it's a very important step. Further on, 
it's not the last step, but let's say it's a further instruction and communication during the week, which means that each of the um, therapies communicates two or three times per week with the parents and carers for further developments and instructions. And by the end of the week, each of the service providers comes back with a weekly report and what we should improve for the next, um, for the next week. So uh, what have we seen as needs of carers and how are we giving our support? Basically, uh, the main thing that is considered as a need is a lack of resources. Some of the families lo uh, lost their job and of course it's translated in um, very low incomes. It's technology issues and digital skills of uh, parents. It's also internet connection which some of them are missing and support for support materials for children. Also another uh, cluster of needs is, adjust, is adjusting in the new lifestyle, which means more time with the kids at home, school support, because some of them are now um, attending online schooling, therapy intervention that we are doing, and also behavior intervention, which is spread 24 hours per day. Also, how are we giving our support is what I, man was, what I mentioned above is the weekly supervision and parenting tips that we give each week. It's the weekly individual psychological counseling, which is a very important issue for us. And we are giving this weekly for each of the parents that um, are participating now in the program. We support basically parents to, to prevent regression and lower the non-functional behavior of, ch of children with intellectual disabilities and autism spectrum. But also for some very um, poor families, we are providing food supplies monthly. And uh, another thing of what we see as challenging uh, after the needs assessment and the support we're giving. Excuse uh, me, Flavia. Excuse yeah? me. Uh, could you speak a little slower, please? Because the interpreters are struggling to follow. Yeah, thank you. A little you. slower, please. Thank you. Thank you. And and you have two minutes time also. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. okay. Two minutes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the part of carers, what we see as challenge is a lack of knowledge on proper intervention. Even that some of the parents participated in the program in one-to-one -one intervention at the center, they still, they are not professional and we cannot uh, attempt so much to make them so professional. Then it's the lack of economic and um, technology resources, but the last and not least is uh, that they are facing fear and insecurity for, uh, for their future. In behalf of professionals, what we are seeing as a challenge is that is more effort on coordination, uh, coordination of the services and service delivery. It's extended on time. It's not like one to one in the center and then it's done, but it's spread all over the day. And there are very small achievements, but still not regress, which makes us really happy for this. And as uh, NGO, what we are facing for the moment is the financial support to continue the service provision and the support for carers, and also saving our workforce and building their capacities through this um, new ways of giving our services. I want to conclude with a very important fact from um, behavior psychology. <laughs> uh, the efforts of everyone is there. So the efforts from professionals is there to support children and to support parents also. The efforts of parents is there to support their child and to give the best from them. But on the other part are the rewards that we are, we are getting. So even as professionals, but even as parents, the achievements are uh, going slowly. And this uh, time extended, of course, impacts somehow uh, our efforts. And uh, of course, we should, should hang on uh, there to, to continue giving our, uh, our services at our best. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for your presentations. Also, the same, we will go to the questions in the end, Flavia. I'll, let's uh, first hear the last presentation and then, then we can uh, have, a, have a discussion. Christiana Chotu from, I mean, Monir, Chris, uh, are you ready to give us your input? Hello. Thank you. Let me share the screen. 
Hmm. No? Yes. Okay. Um, hello to everybody. And let me first just say a few words uh, to introduce myself. I'm Christiana Zotu. I'm an orientation mobility uh, officer and I work with and for Ami Morning since the very beginning, that is 27 years before. And for the last uh, 10 years, I'm responsible for the coordination of our four services, which is from early intervention until the uh, end of life of our um, children and adults, of course. Um, for Amimon, it's a great chance that you offer to us and the opportunity to be with you, share and learn. Mm. First of all, I'd like to clarify that in Greek, we, would, we, would, we wouldn't use the term um, informal carer, but we mainly use caregiver or family members because the family members they they say that they are the family, so it's not carer, it's not it, it's uh, automatic for them. So it's caregiver, what we mainly say. Um, but the meaning, of course, is the same. So Amimoni is a uh, Panhellenic association of parents and guardians and friends of multiple disabled visually impaired people, which means for the whole uh, of Greece. Um, it is here since 1993 because there was no any other, and there isn't any other formal education context for multiple disabled children. We try to cover the, as I said before, the range between uh, the birth and the end uh, of life. Of course, we cannot cover, it's a non-profit organization, which means like uh, um, uh, the Down syndrome of Albania that we just heard, it means that it's not uh, paid by, by the state directly but um, from European uh, programs, etc. cetera. Um, our wish would be the covering of all needs, which is impossible, but we, we struggle and we manage a lot until now, until uh, today, 280 families have already benefit, benefited from our services and we keep, we keep going. Now, uh, the situation, the really peculiar situation that we all uh, have to deal with. Since the 12th of March that we followed the rule of the shutdown, all our trainees are at home, uh, except the seven who live in our residential home. It is their places, so they stay there with their carers whose everyday life has also changed since they have to cover 20 hours uh, shifts. As it is for anyone, this period has been a truly unknown challenge that we don't want to have it, but we do have to face with it. There are much more barriers, even more complex. And for Amimoni, uh, we must say that it took us some days to realize the situation and considering uh, the fact that the necessity of the face-to-face -face interaction of multiple disabled visual pe people, even more the physical interaction are impossible because I have to mention here that mainly for blind people, it's very, uh, it's more important to have physical uh, touch, physical uh, approach, physical uh, way of life, because through internet or through uh, a screen, they cannot communicate actually uh, with the person who is on the other side of the screen. Despite the lack of therapies or therapeutic interventions, we have to deal with the lack of the very basic need for socializing in the means of the actual individualized needs. Because again, with multiply disabled visually impaired people, which means that um, our children would be mentally retarded apart from uh, from the visual impairment or um, in uh, or with autistic behavior or with um, motor motoric problems this makes it really hard uh, for us to provide the services that we would like to to, to provide so what we mainly have done during this month and we keep going is first to reduce the monthly contribution from parents members to the parents association. It's, it's an, a monthly contribution that parents pay to their association actually to help, uh, to help out with the financial uh, needs of Amimoni. Um, Early intervention, which is um, our program from zero to six years old, it still uh, it's going on uh, via Skype, not to all the families. We have 30 fam 35 families in, uh, in Athens and others in, um, in the whole of the country. Not all the families yet are in it, but uh, week by week, 
more of them, uh, they come to us. One reason is that they don't have access to technology. The other reason is that they didn't feel that it would help their children, but it does. And day by day, they increase. Uh, we, we provide and we try to provide great support on psychological, therapeutic and educational or training issues, mainly by telephone to those families who are not familiarized with the technology. And I'm speaking about oral, uh, or our uh, children and adults via Skype, Zoom, um, or any other Viber, Messenger, whatever the, the parents can, uh, can cope with. Um, we provide support and we take action for several necessary procedures that parents are not familiarized with that, like digital prescriptions, which is something very, very new the last two weeks that the state has, uh, has done this, uh, has given this opportunity so that they don't have to go to the doctors, but the doctors can uh, give uh, the prescriptions uh, electronically so parents can make it much more easier, but we have parents who cannot do it, so we do it uh, for them. Or we help them in changes that have occurred, pensions, etc., for the money that they need to have uh, from the state again. Uh, we face this challenge of uh, the adaptation to new ways of approaching the needs of the families and the staff and trainers, therapists, and staff of assistance, because we have to, to um, our staff uh, does not work, uh, um, is not allowed to work with the children. They get some money from the state, which means that Amimoni does not pay them until the end of April. But because of that, they're not allowed to work for Amimoni, which means that they're not allowed even to communicate um, via internet with the children. So we try to do it uh, voluntarily by our staff. It's not easy all the times. Um, this is very interesting because it, uh, we didn't know how it would work, but uh, it's going uh, really nice. We have contacted with the local authorities to inform them about some of the families who are, who are in bigger need. Um, we wrote to them, we wrote to the local authorities where we know that we have the families. Uh, we said to them that um, the needs are there, so if they would like to give help, then we would be the, uh, the contact. Uh, we with the local authority and the local authority with the family, which is really great because it, it has started to really work uh, with results, I mean. Um, of course, we have the lack of staff due to the shutdown, so we have a problem to service provision, and we don't know what will happen after the 30th of uh, April. Um, new means of service provision, it is after all in one way direction where the challenge has to be a chance of uh, adaptation. It's not easy, but, uh, and of course we can, we are optimistic, but we cannot be happy with what we have, we just have to adapt and provide uh, the, the more th that can be done. Uh, before that, uh, I would uh, just would like to say that we're looking, of course, we're looking forward to, to the end of all this. Until that time, we try to do as much as it's needed in order to keep our people, parents, children, uh, staff, morally uh, safe, because the, the next day will be difficult because of the burnout of the carers, mainly um, for our uh, residential home, that they really uh, struggle. Uh, they, re they really do a great job and they are there and they, um, okay, they they're doing what they had to do, but with uh, their self uh, in it. Um, so thank you. I, I think I was very quick. Um, this is uh, the logo of Amimon, and this is the st stay home, the little, the, the second one I would, in Greek. This is the, the, the logo that exists everywhere in, in the country, in TV, in the roads, in the houses, in everything. So stay home and take care. <laughs> and uh, thank you again for this chance that uh, you give to us. Okay, thank you for the, all the speakers and, and also thank you for all of you for being so, so good on, on timing. Uh, we have several questions to you uh, through different channels, I would say. I try to pick up them here. Uh, 
First of all, many people have asked uh, through different in different way a little bit. Uh, I think what what um, Christian you ended your your presentation that uh, how can you uh, make it easier? Of course, all these services and so on. But how is this, the stress of the family family carers and the burnout, the possibility of burnout during the situation now? been taking care of in your services and how have you considered this? Isabel, maybe you want to take this one? Yeah, sorry, I was answering. Yeah, can you, can you repeat the question? Sorry for that. Uh, I, I had short, uh, just uh, shortly the, the stress and burnout of, uh, of family carers. Yeah. How your idea, how have you faced this and, and what kind of yeah. ideas you have for this? Yeah, there are two kinds of stress. Uh, in one situation, the family carers can't have access to the, the people with, of their family with disabilities of their family because they are uh, in lockdown, but in institutions. So it has been one month now. They know that it, it's okay, but uh, the situ they are longing to see each other and uh, because what you, of what you mentioned there are some bad internet connection even even there in some remote places these people at home can have access to their family to the people with disability in institution i, I, I know it's not good to have institution but that's the situation right now in france they are separated they are separated for a long time now. And because of the lack of internet connection, it's difficult to be together. And actually people with severe autism of multiple handicaps, it's difficult to, to, to speak through the screen. Mm, so yeah. that's a really, really difficult situation. And we've got uh, testimonies everywhere that it's, it's too long, it's too long. And the second situation is at home, at home because uh, many people came home and that's a good point. And, and there with people with severe autism, with multiple handicaps, the families are really tired. And most of them, they do not want professional to come home because they are afraid of contamination. So they are alone. And even though they are supported, they are alone to care, to take care, to cure, and it's too much. So we are now thinking of uh, developing respite solutions to make sure that if they can't go further, the people with disability or their families could be uh, welcome in a place where we are going to take care of them. That's the situation right now, but it's, it's, it's too much. After one month, it's too much, really. Mm. Yes, yes, there, there will be more and more this mm. kind of breakdown, breakdowns of families for sure. Uh, then, uh, then uh, Flavia, maybe you can uh, take the question. There has also been different questions regarding the topic that what kind of support and services uh, you have developed to help the parents to explain the current situation for the people with disabilities for their loved ones. What kind of support uh, materials or systems you have? So, uh, yeah, uh, basically, uh, at first time, we didn't create anything like, let's say, supported materials directly to, to explain the situation because of uh, the difficulties that the children of our center have on understanding the situation. But later on, uh, through different platforms, we, we try to create uh, visual aids and to explain them visually because the, the children at our center are uh, one to, to 12 years old, chronological age, but not, let's say, mental age. So it makes a very uh, big difference. And it's, uh, we tried to, to create a routine on, on um, let's say, doing things like washing hands uh, in terms of, um, let's say, uh, learned behavior mostly, but all the time that we uh, we supported our families and children is by explaining them through visual aids. 
this is the the way that we choose to to explain what is happening uh, all this time because it's it's really hard. But I just want to add something from the previous uh, question that um, that uh, Isabel responded. Actually, um, we are doing a um, study with parents now for to measure the stress level of a parent and soon we will come back with uh, with the results and it's very meaningful um, to us everything uh, that is coming from these um, these days because uh, it's very difficult for them to manage the um, the behavior of of their child and it's a challenge even from them, them and from our weekly reports from our psychologist that is giving directly counseling to them. So, um, thank you, uh, thank you for that. I think it's it's very very important, very important topic indeed. Uh, then also a, a bit uh, close to these questions, there has been question uh, from from the participants that uh, do family carers have access to PPPE at home and what systems are in place for persons with disability if the family carer is sick or hospitalized? Uh, Christiana, would you like to take these questions? And also, of course, if you have something to add uh, to the previous ones, feel free to do that. Uh, well, the question, this is the difficult question, I think, mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's, um, um, if that happens, then yes, we have the, the uh, we have the people who are going to, to, to cover the need of the child. The, the main problem there is what uh, Isabel, men Isabel mentioned before, that the families are afraid of accepting people to their homes. I mean, they, they prefer to, to solve it somehow with the other family members instead of uh, uh, a stranger or, or, or a person um, outside of the family go there. But we have done it uh, and we will do it. I mean, we can do it. The, the problem is that uh, they have to accept it. The other thing that we have uh, thought is that uh, in, in, in such a case that it's really serious, the problem, maybe our residential uh, home would act as a... Um, uh, as a place of um, uh, um, ah, th th that the child can stay there, can stay with us, even though it's not the child that lives permanently in a um, residential home. Uh, we're praying that uh, nothing like that will happen. But if it happens, yes, we have the uh, the persons who, who will go out of, uh, of course, out of uh, the working time, eh? out of the, just because somebody has to do it, so we will do it, yes. Mm. Yeah, and thank uh, you. To, sorry, to say uh, what Isabel uh, mentioned again before about the, the two kinds of stresses, the, the two kinds of uh, burnouts, the two kinds of, I think that it's all over the same. I think that we face, oh. Oh. all of us, we face the same, Two kinds. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Then uh, I would like to, uh, let's say, ask from everyone, everyone in our panel uh, to ask two, two topics. I think very relevant ones pointed out in, in questions and questions sections. Uh, uh, first of all, some clarification was, was asked that uh, the services you have mentioned and you have talked about. Uh, they are, you have developed them for both for children and also for adults with disability, maybe a few words about this. And, and then I think very interesting one also that how you do you see if you will uh, uh, extend or, or still go on with these new types of services when the crisis is, is over? How do you see that one? All of you can, can answer, Isabel, you can start. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I was answering also a question online. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Sorry, I'm not good at that. <laughs> no, no problem, no problem. So, so two points. Yeah. Uh, your, your services, what you have now developed uh, due to the crisis, will you also extend and go yeah. on with them yeah. after? And, and then mm -hmm. how do you see the situation? We have talked, I think, a lot about children with disabilities. Yeah. Also, are, are the, all the things discussed today um, also 
uh, developed for adults with disabilities yeah. now more and more at home. So these two topics, few words. Yeah, Rick, your first question is a very important one. Actually, we are into uh, the transformation of our services from institutions not institution, but from places where people are gathered, not a lot of them, but into individualized services. So we are into this transformation in France. And uh, I think we learn a lot. We will learn a lot from, from what we have done the last month, the last 30 days. Um, Actually, we will uh, send a questionnaire at the end of this week to all, all of our uh, services, 3,000 3, services, just to, to ask them, first of all, the lockdown will be uh, abolished within one month. How do we do that together? And second question, how do we go on with what we have done now? To, to What do we learn from this situation, this terrible situation? together to go on with a transformation of our services. So I don't have the answer now, but I will have that within the next two weeks. Mm -hmm. But one point I would like to mention, very important point, that the government, which is a liberal government, is now, right now, asking us not to pay less for these services, but we, we know that they, they're asking us for a rapid, rapid transformation, which is not bad, but, they think that we could make this transformation with less money. I, we are sure of that. And that's not the point. And we all know that that's not the point, you know. But the, so we are, and, and we also need the time, not because we don't want to transform the services, but just because we want to make it right for the people. So that, that's the point, that, that's the first point. Regarding the, your second question, uh, I forgot it. <laughs> It's uh, 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 for adults. Adults. So, adults. Yeah, for adults. Uh, actually, it's the same. It's the same. And I mean, it's not the same like children. It's not. But uh, we we have uh, psychological uh, services. We have uh, people going at home if it's possible to make sure the people are supported. So we have the same thing for people, for little ch children, or for adults. Uh, I have to say that a majority, not a majority, but uh, some adults did stay in facilities, in, in places where they, are, they were before, because some of them have no family, actually, as well. <laughs> That's a point. So their fam the, the, the place where they live is the, the place where they are and where it's not a family, but it's their place, okay? So that's one point. And, uh, and also we have many adults who are in Belgium <laughs> because they, have, they did not find any support in France, so they are in Belgium. And some, other, some of them are, have been sent back to, to France, that's also a point. So I just want to, wanted to mention that because there is a diversity of situation we are facing and we are trying to find solution for each of them. So that's also a good point mm. because I don't like this word resilient, but in a way we show that we are flexible and we can find a solution in a good way. And to go back to your first question, that's a good, good, something very important we learned from this situation. Mm, yes, indeed. Flavia, anything you want to add on this? Yeah, basically, since we are based on um, children's services, um, we see as an opportunity these uh, new skills that we learned, which is the online therapy that we are offering. And uh, we are thinking on continuing giving our services to each of them that want the service but cannot access our center and our city. So uh, we see that we can go on with, uh, with this kind of online support. And uh, as for the question, how do we see our future? Basically, it's, it's a little bit hard to um, answer because of course we are willing to continue uh, securing these services first and then uh, transforming or uh, extending our services to a greater um, target group, which are uh, adults. Thank you. 
Thank you, Flavia. Then, Christiana, you want would like to add something? Yes, yes I would like to add that um, uh, the, for us, the main thing that we, we feel that we gained is the, the fact that we can be flexible. Uh, the situation uh, forces us to be, to, be, to be flexible. So this is the nice thing. Uh, what we, uh, we see that we can continue with is the, this um, contacts with the local authorities, which, is, which are in a different way than, that, than what we did before one month. So we will keep it and we will make it uh, better and more, more efficient. And the other thing is that um, because our uh, early interventionists did it anyway um, uh, uh, through Skype for the families uh, who live outside of Athens, but we can develop it more because now this is how it works. And, the, and we can um, expand it to, to parents with uh, all the children of let's say 12, 12 or 15 or 20 years old that cannot be in our day center, but we can provide um, uh, training through this way. We, did, we hadn't done it before. We do it now. It works. So we will uh, keep doing it. And, and as for the future, I think that this uh, really bad situation that we live gives chances to expand our services. When everything will be again healthy safe and mm. as we as we think that we will go back to what we had i'm not sure but anyway mm. yeah it will be better thank you yeah i i agree i think it's it's very important uh, to see that uh, that there is flexibility and resilience like isabel said and also at the same time of course to make sure that the, the cuts and, and and cuts in services and so on made now are not there for forever and and it's not used in in, in that way for for longer longer time okay thank you for the the panelists for the uh, for the presentations and for and for the questions now i will a couple of minutes later i will move to thomas uh, to you will conclude our our session don't you Thank you, Kirsi, uh, Isabel, Flavia, and Christiana. Uh, I think a great overview of what's uh, what's being done in, in, in Europe today to help uh, to help families. Um, to conclude, uh, I mean, it's quite difficult to conclude when you've heard so much uh, information. Uh, but I will focus on on a few key issues. Uh, first of all, this uh, the topic that we're talking about today, which is helping uh, uh, people with disabilities and their families in, in times of crisis, is largely ignored in the media, in the press, and in the political response. Uh, I read uh, just before this meeting, I was reading the uh, latest communication by the Commission on uh, lifting restrictions in the lockdown uh, and, and how that can be done across Europe. And this topic was completely ignored uh, and not even there. Even though we're not only talking about millions of people with disabilities, millions of older people, etc., but we're also talking about millions of family members. Uh, and I think that's a huge issue that this, uh, this topic is, is by and large not mentioned uh, at all. Um, well, that's a sad state of affairs, I must say. Um, what we've discussed today is that uh, there's a diversity of, of situations. Each family, each person with a disability has uh, their own experiences, their own context, their own impairments, and how they react to this uh, context is different. Uh, and also their care and support needs are, are also very different. Uh, and we need to make sure that as a society, we respond to those individual needs uh, as well. Uh, I think what we've seen is that the uh, partnerships between the services, the families and the people uh, concerned uh, have adapted very quickly, uh, doing their best to, to provide the, the, the right types of services that are needed in this case, in often very difficult uh, situations for, for all involved. Uh, I've been particularly pre impressed by the new Types of services shifting, uh, you know, face-to-face -face contact to online uh, facilities is, is always quite difficult. I think for for staff who, who uh, and people who are used to face-to-face -to -face contact, which is is, is needed very often. I'm also very impressed about how how the professionals and then the families have adapted to also, you know, helping families deal with uh, getting benefits, dealing with medical prescriptions, dealing with uh, how to connect with local regional authorities, hospitals, etc. 
uh, these connections and these, these partnerships are really needed. And, and I think that's definitely the, the way forward. And maybe even after this crisis uh, is over. Um, also, I think what's incredibly important is to make sure that we, uh, we advocate each with their own roles and responsibilities as uh, organizations of people with disabilities, as family organizations, uh, or as uh, services. Sometimes these are, these are mixed as the organizations we've discussed uh, today, but we all need to push to bring these issues to light to make sure that the people with disabilities and the families uh, get access to the, to the support they need uh, and urgently. Um, we've even seen that uh, in many cases, the government has not even uh, financially supported uh, the services uh, in these very difficult times, which I think is, uh, again, shows the progress that we need to make uh, as a society uh, together. Um, we talked a lot about how this is a health crisis. We hear a lot about how it's an economic crisis. We don't hear so much about the social crisis. Uh, and I, what we really need to make sure is that this will, this will come to light and, and the political response, uh, response to it. Um, and I think the starting point that policymakers should make and we should all make is, is that we need to speak to those who are, who are dealing with these issues. We need to speak to the people with disabilities. We need to speak to the families and speak to the, the formal care providers to really understand uh, what the issues are and to make sure that these issues are, are, are responded to in the right way. In, uh, in our responses, both in terms of dealing with the emergency right now, but also more medium term concerns, such as lifting, uh, lifting the lockdown, lifting the limitations today. How, how do we deal with that situation? Uh, but also more looking at the future, and we can look at the economic recovery, that's important, but we also need to make sure we look after the, the family recovery and the social recovery, uh, equally important, and that has to start by supporting uh, family carers, uh, people with disabilities, and the care workers. So that's, uh, that's it in terms of conclusions. Uh, Kirsi, would you like to uh, make a few final remarks? I think, uh, I think that was uh, pretty much all. I think, I think it was very good discussion and, and I think uh, very much highlighted the, the strong need for collaboration between families and service providers at the moment. And also that there should be very strong kind of appreciation from the from the public authorities towards the work done in in the families at the moment and and done in the in the service provision to adapt the services at the moment and I think this hard work done in in both of these should be should be uh, hopefully it's uh, it's acknowledged and and not. Uh, used uh, as a cut cut of the of the funding of the services in in the long long run, long run. That's that's I think we share all all this all this worry also in the in the situation we are we are in. And uh, but however, I I think it's uh, it was very also very positive what we heard. It was a lot of uh, we hear that there is really a lot of uh, creative, flexible solutions all over Europe done in, in, in very quickly, very quickly. I think we have discussed about digitalization for long, really long time. And now in a few weeks, so many things have been changed to the digital form and, and, and to the kind of things I think we never imagined that could be done done in that way. And I think it shows a very, very strong uh, will to innovate and work for the best of the people with disabilities in, in the services and in, in collaboration, collaboration with all the all the stakeholders. So I think it's this uh, discussion illustrate illustrated this this fact in a, in a very good way. And this will actually be the uh, sorry for interrupting, Kirsi, The topic yeah, no, of next next week's webinar. Yeah. Uh, I received a few messages from from my colleagues reminding me um, that next week's webinar will be precisely on the use of technology in this uh, time of crisis, helping to connect uh, uh, professional uh, service providers with with people with disabilities and their, and their services. It will be uh, next Wednesday uh, at two o'clock uh, Brussels time on uh, the use of technology uh, as well. So we hope to see everyone uh, there as well. Um, Great. Yep, that's it. I think. That's it, yeah. yeah. Thank you for the, all the participants. We had great number of, of participants, around 120. Thank you for being with us this afternoon and, and let's get in, in touch in many ways. Thank you for all. <laughs>